because we want to protect our asses from crybabies, salty bitches, and lawsuits, we want to remind you this show is rated M for mature individuals only. That means if you're like easily offended by graphic language, griefers, or full frontal nudity, please disconnect now and get the fuck out. Thank you, Mario. But the good podcast is in another castle. I know you want this body, but you just can't have it. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Remove from Play, the show where we remove ourselves from the culture and hobby we love to discuss. It was that culture and hobby? Video, Video games. games. Today is Tuesday, April twenty fifth, twenty seventeen, episode one eighty one of Remove from Play. The real episode one eighty one. Yes, because Artemis Prime is all alone over there in the main studio this week. But look at all that room you got. And you can turn around completely, and she, he won't get mad for you spinning. <laughs> I know, right? I'm bumping into his leg or nothing. Yep, you've got enough room to have some water. Oh, yeah. I know, right? Show off your fancy red solo cuff, because we're high class around here. Hey, yeah, oh, and yeah. you're still on the table. Oh. oh, look at that. Yeah, we high class here. We prefer, He may prefer, I prefer, Oh, God damn it. Why didn't anyone tell me? <laughs> this is, we're a real professional show. I swear. I swear. So everyone, everyone, yeah. So everyone who's listening to audio probably has no idea what I just did. A sign fell, and I picked, I put it back up. <laughs> Hopefully, let, so let's do a thing. How many times is the sign going to fall today? That'll be the thing for all you video people. Keep a track in the comments below or whatever when you're watching the VOD. Police yeah. Your but yeah, yeah. So we're real. As I was just trying to say, we're real classy. The uh-huh. sign's falling. Uh, but yeah, but see, I finally provided a table. Yes, did I you not? Did. I did. <laughs> I mean, yeah. <laughs> We've had it the whole time, and it used to be right here behind me. But hey, I provided one. It's close enough. I'll take it. Yeah, so we're flying a little solo. He's flying solo in the main shot today. Flying solo. I hate the damn song. I don't know why it made money because people are stupid. Oh, who said that? I don't know. There's somebody. There's still a mysterious voice in the uh. studio, apparently. I don't know. Oh. I want to go to that a little bit. Yeah, but we're back with more goodness as always. We got quite a bit for you guys this week. We got some little bites as always. Some news of the week. Gaming Spotlight. Uh, we have a little actually a little promotion to talk about halfway through the show of a local convention. And then actually, we have a top 10 list this week for you guys. Yes. Ooh, because you don't give us no questions. You don't give us no questions. So we got to no. make up stuff that maybe you'll want to know. Yes. And, it's a little, and it'll be interesting as it'll be top 10 guns in gaming. Now, we did do top 10 weapons in gaming before, but this one's specifically just guns. So. Yeah, and. And no gun blades. No, it doesn't count. <sighs> Hashtag don't count. All right. Oh, I guess that one's out the window. Let me just chuck it on chuck out it there. Out. Just put it in your honorable mentions. There you go. But we're going to start this off like we always do, talk about what games we've been playing this past week. I, myself, I'm going to go first this week. I did some patching of that Final Fantasy 15, and I've been enjoying all the cool stuff. I did not buy any of the fancy shit you can buy, and there's not much free stuff that's got added to it. <laughs> so I'm thinking about buying some of the, the like, apparently there's some cool new guns. and Not guns, some new weapons. You can get some cool new items and stuff. I might, I might give them a little money. I don't know. I'm debating. If I'm really enjoying the new stuff they added in for free, then maybe I'll consider giving them some money. But other than that, yeah, that's actually all I've been playing. I've been playing some more Final Fantasy 15, replaying the game. Um, so, man, I still like the game, man. I'm surprised. I I didn't know a hybrid between a Japanese RPG and a little bit of modern open world slash Western influences I would enjoy so much. But I am. I'm enjoying it a lot. I, a second playthrough a couple months later, I'm still enjoying it. And I love that Prompto, baby. He's the best. Prompto's the best. Although Ignis would be my waifu, because he can that motherfucker can cook. Yeah, it's all that matters too. Apparently, could probably take you on luxurious dates too. Yeah, I bet he Hold would. I hand. bet he'd give me classy dates too. Yeah, he's, you know, throw your throw his coat down, make sure you don't walk over puddles. Yeah, but he, he would be a motherfucker to do that shit. Yeah, I I could dig that. Nah, I dig that shit. <laughs> uh, but how about you, Artemis Prime? I have been um. The beginning of the week, I was playing StarCraft and all that fun jazz that I've been playing. And then I got a PS4 Friday. 
Not even playing nothing but Persona 5. Like, legitly, game of the year. And I say that because it is so much fun. Like, they, the characters are so interesting that you can't help but really hate a few because you're like, why are you on my team? I hate you, but I love the story. And a game that can literally make me hate a person, right, who's on my team, but still let me make me go and be like, I want to put up with this so I can find out what's going to happen next. I'll just have to deal with you. But Persona 5 is literally, like, the music is great. The graphics, like, it looks so, like, crisp and drawn. You know what I mean? Like, when you look at it, you know, and you're playing it, it's just, like, it gives you that feel of, like, this is the setting of a game. It sets the tone for the game up really well because you got your really light moments where it's ha-ha-ha, and you got your really dark moments where your like, head's really fudged up. <laughs> And I, like, I really appreciate it. Like, and I'm, I'm like, what? They have a little bar in. I think it's maybe the, how much of the percentage of the game you got done. Where it's like, how well do people, how many people know about you? And it's like at 20% right now. But I put in at least like 24 hours in the night game so far. And I just, I can't stop playing. Like, I got Event Horizon too. But Persona 5 is my life right now. Maybe I haven't even touched StarCraft, and I'm like, oh, man, I really love StarCraft. But Yeah, Persona series is a very popular and cool one, you know, so. It, it, it gives you that right, that right blend of RPG. And if you don't want to just, like, you know, grind all day, you can go and interact with other characters. And I think that's one of the things I really like about the Persona series is that it's not just all grind, grind, grind. It's, hey, get to know your other people because they got some backstories, too, that you might be interested in. And... You know, the more I watch it, the more I get, the more I see these interactions between characters, the more I'm like, I become involved in it. Like this day, I'm going to go see you. I need some more money because you're a gold digger, but I want to go talk to you some more too, because now I know you got this and that, and you know, I don't want to spoil too much, but it just, it's, I feel like Persona series really brings out character relations the best. That's what I really enjoy about it because like getting to know people pays off. But you, you tend to understand that you can't just judge a book by your cover. Like, you just can't. But so. in this one, you don't shoot yourself to release your Persona. No, you right? don't. <laughs> That's you the know. thing I remember the most. That one Persona game was like, I know. I, I, it was boom. Oh, uh, yeah. I believe it was Persona, like, 2. They were doing that in. Yeah. Yeah, not. It w wasn't 3. Oh, no, it was 3. I think it was, I was Persona I, 3. It was, I, I yeah, think it was it Persona was 3. 3. Yeah, because I played those crazy game series. Yeah. Persona Three was fun too. I love Persona Three. Well, I'm glad you're enjoying Persona. It's, a, it's a, you know it's honestly a strong franchise, and it's been a, it's a reason why they keep making more and more of them. So, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that three five year wait was great. <laughs> it was totally made. Up. I was like, I can do this. Yeah, it makes it makes it better when you don't when it takes a long time. It just when it when you start reaching the five. No, no, I think we start reaching six to eight year to ten year wait. Then it starts getting a little rough. Damn it, hearts. <laughs> One day we'll have that. One Alrighty, speaking of that, I think that's a good way to segue into the Little Bites, and actually, since that's at the end, we'll do that first now, since you brought it up. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to breeze through this, because we're going to want to get to that top ten list. So first thing here on Little Bites is uh, Square Enix confirms that there will be no Kingdom Hearts 3 and no Final Fantasy VII Remake this year. Uh, so that sucks. we got to wait even longer. we got to push back even more. So they're having like some type of, like I don't know, let me see, was it some conference or earnings meeting or something? Let's see. Uh, oh, yeah, so in an, in an investor's document, uh, they showed off their timeline for their games and they, everything that Final Fantasy VII Remake and Kingdom Hearts is showing up in now in 2018. So that sucks. You know, they that really does suck. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, t technically in this document, it shows Kingdom Hearts 2.8 in 2017, which we know that happened. Mm -hmm. uh, so that sucks that we're not getting that. Like, what, I, I'm disappointed. I I really wish they wouldn't go and tease games and then be like, oh, wait, we messed up five years later. We're still not done making this game yet. Like, yeah, I've been working on this for five years, all right? Like, for real? Yeah, I'm all for games being delayed to really get better, but, man, we've been waiting so long. I know, and so it just, long. like, like it loses the drive. Like, literally, you know, like, don't get me wrong. I know they gave you Kingdom Hearts 2.8 and stuff, but, I'm like, to me, it's just like, oh, that's that's not enough. I want the third one. I want the next storyline here. And you're not giving me to me. So I'm not really that interested in all your other stuff. I love the card one, but again, though, you know, that's Chain not. the memories, oh my. Uh, yeah, but, you know, it just, it sucks getting, like, twirled around like a yo-yo. Like, we got it. 
Then we don't. We don't. Then we got it. Then we don't. Wax on. Wax off. Wax off. Yeah. See? Other things that happen around here is uh, Pokemon Red and Green got nominated for the Hall of Fame for gaming and everything like that. So that's cool. Yeah. Yep. And this is the, actually the legit, you know, World Video Game Hall of Fame. Like, the, and that's the, the organization itself and everything. And that's cool. It will join the classics such as Mario and Sonic and whatnot. So I think this is a well-deserved game for its cool thing and whatnot. Uh, I think it's the Strong Museum that does. Yeah, it's the Strong Museum specifically. So that that will be cool. If we can be honest here, I feel like it took forever for Pokemon to get on that list. To to be honest with you, like if you look at like like a list like that, you you want games that just literally like sold the system. You know what I mean? You want games that are like oh, I got it for system. sure for the Game Boy. Uh, you know, like it goes matter. it goes Tetris and then Pokemon. <laughs> Those are the ones that made the Game Boy successful. Sprinkle with a little bit of Uno, and so I'm I'm just kidding. There probably was an Uno yeah. game on there. I uh, totally believe there probably was. But you know what I mean? Like, you know, you got your Monster Hunter. You know, there's just games that will literally sell you a system. And I feel like there should be, it should have been on there. And yeah, it's red and green. I thought, it, I thought, I was one of the people who was like, oh, not red and blue. And then I found out that blue is just another version of green. So apparently, yeah. Yeah. Apparently, yeah. yeah, it's something like either it's a modded version of red or, you know, or apparently it's not for all intents and purposes, it's pretty much green. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. But then we got yellow version later. Uh huh. And then um, Pikachu yeah. was following you, and that's fun. I remember people trying to play Pokemon Green on uh, on the PC, and they would port it over. And they were like so hot. They were so into it. They were like, we got Pokemon Black. I'm like, man, I'm still in like yellow. Like, what are y'all talking about, Black? Pokemon, we got it. But this was like when I was in high school, and they were trying to port it over. Yeah. Yeah. So that was uh, funny to watch. Next little bite here. Uh, Nintendo discontinued the NES Classic, uh, presumably to make room for It's pretty much confirmed that Super NES Classic, so they're pretty much stopping the production on this so they can start making that. Uh, so this is becoming officially a collector's item at this point because there already was hard to get, and now it's being discontinued and not more, no more printing. So get them while you can, folks, and if you got them sealed, you're rich in 10 years from now. Pretty much. Yeah, because the collector's going to want that. Uh, next, we got a little normal PSA we get when Game for Gold comes out. They announced a new Game for Gold for May. So for Xbox One, you'll get that, uh, what is that, Twisted Dr- Genji? Wait, what is this? Hey, hang, 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 hang on. Kiana Sisters, yeah. Twisted Dreams, Director's Cut. Yeah, Kiana cut. Sisters, yeah, that. It's a Director's Cut version. You also get the Lara Croft Temple of Osiris, which actually is a fun fucking game. If you like those drop over the shoulder, not over the shoulder, like there, it's like a guy's uh. funny character, and then you're looking down at him on a map, and they're, they're walking around, kind of like a twin stick shooter. Like Halo, like I remember that. Yeah, so that's a good one. And for 360, you'll get The Force Unleashed 2 and Star Wars The Complete Saga. Yeah. And, yeah. Yo. Hello. We actually have our special guest that we mentioned earlier coming on right now via the phone. Hello, Mr. How Mark are you Miller. gentlemen doing today? Hi, God. Hi, God. We know we don't have your Going picture on. yet, but um, oh, there's your picture. Oh. Yeah, we have your we have your picture on the screen. So that's I look I look cute. Hopefully. Yeah, it's, it's your fancy black and white one from your you know you got it's your good looking one. By good yeah. looking, I mean the, I, the way you I, always look. Yeah, you know. You always got to try and look suave for everybody, right? Yeah. Yes, so, exactly. But, uh, cool, cool. So, yeah, so we're just finishing dive our on in, shall we? here. And, uh, so we're just going to go through this really quickly here. Actually, you came in at a good time. We were talking about how the NES Classic has been discontinued. And I bet that, uh, something that you have an opinion about. <laughs> Would you like that opinion or no? <laughs> sure. I think you should give that opinion. I think you should give that opinion. And that would be a good way to segue out into the next segment well uh i i uh i think that uh everybody will I, I, all my opinions will be loved or hated so that's just basically <laughs> it for the nes classic you know nice little uh emulation toy uh for a a uh, equivalent to a um a ten dollar raspberry pi that is going for so much money on ebay that it, it uh in a shell that you could probably just uh, take a regular Nintendo and put it in there anyway. And uh, there you go. That's <laughs> pretty, pretty much it. It's, yeah, super uh, just collector's I think item, it's, pretty I much. I think it's garbage. 
Yeah, it's just a collector's item. It's it, if no one legitimately used it for the functions they wanted, they just want. Oh, I have this in a shelf, and it'll look real cool. But wait, there's more. There's an SNES classic going to be coming out. Yep, so. that's actually the main reason why they stopped the production on this. They want to start making the next one. So, and then eventually we'll get the N64 I wonder what, and whatnot. I I have predictions of what games are going to be on there. By the way, it's pretty ridiculous. Alrighty. So. Yeah, you'll, you'll, yeah. you'll kick that one in your nugget in your pocket, and then you'll uh, be like, yep, I had the right picks. <laughs> it's like, oh, I got this game already. No. <laughs> <laughs> I think your uh, mic, uh, check if it got switched off there, good sir. It says it's not on anymore. All right, Sorry. while he's working, not you, uh, while he's working on that, your batteries, uh, you're fucking shitting me. Your batteries died. Ah, uh, already. Well, while I'm fixing his batteries, the last thing we had to say for Little Bites, pretty much, is that Twitch expanded their subscription options. And now you, if you're not a partner, you can pretty much earn bits and make money and whatnot. So, yeah, that's that's that. So, yeah, so if that's something you guys, yeah, that's definitely something, you know, we'll probably apply for if anyone really does want to dip, tip us bits or something to make money. Uh, we're not against that, but we, of course, we don't say you have to give us anything. So we'll probably sign up for that stuff and whatnot. All right, so that's our mm -hmm. little bites. So we're going to go into some news of the week here real quick, and then actually we're going to go over a little, little promotion piece here with Mark All right, after that, and then we'll be getting into our top ten list. So let's switch over to some oh, news yeah. of the week. It's time for gaming news. <laughs> Alrighty, I'll take away in the first. Has Ar Artemis Prime is doing my producer duties. I think he's back. I am back. I'll take away the first one here. And the first news of the item week we have here is esports officially joining the Asian Games of 2022. So actually. What's going on here is a statement released by the Olympic Council of Asia explained that they decided to include these event, uh, gaming events in there, things like League of Legends, Counter-Strike, things like that, into there because they want to start recognizing that these are actually competitive things that are very popular with youth. So they want to appeal pretty much to the youth. <laughs> That's honestly what it comes down to. They will be doing their initial like practice games in 2018, but you're not going to earn medals in them. 2022 is when they actually will be fully in the Olympics and you actually can get that bronze, gold, and silver. So what do you guys think about that, man? That's uh, The Olympics is recognizing that esports is a thing and competitive gaming is a popular thing with the young crowd and they wish to be a part of that. I think that's pretty amazing that they're recognizing it and they're giving us some credit saying, hey, this stuff takes skills, it is competitive, and let's show it a little love. Um, Like, we, uh, like I always say, more exposure is good exposure. No matter, you know what I mean. Like you don't really, obviously don't want bad exposure, but I mean like the more people you try to get into your niche, if you, from a business standpoint, yeah, well, you know they, they I mean, clearly yeah. want to just get the youth. <laughs> yeah, because if you go from from a business standpoint, you know it's genius. So it's like, hey, maybe they don't like this now, but if we show them enough of it and show enough ads, maybe we can get more people to buy more of our products. Like literally, genius move, and um. If you're into all that, if you're into the Olympics, if you're into following people like Faker from League or other people, you know, uh, oh, it's a great move, money-wise. Shoot, I, it just and it gives more people a reason to go and also, you know, be like, hey, you know, if you're really good at playing games, you know, maybe you want to join the esports community. Why not? You know, maybe you have a chance to join the Olympics in 2022. So it's again, you know, it's an interesting. It's an interesting um, deal that has very positive effects and not really negative effects. You know what I mean? Like, of course, you have people who are like, well, what if they go and I don't know. I can't think of a negative Or they even effect, say, right? like, oh, gaming's not, it's not a sport. Yeah, it's not a physical sport, yeah, but I it's mean, competitive and it's even, something you can p compete in. So. Yeah, if it's something that people can p compete in, I mean, sure. If you don't want to watch <laughs> it, don't watch it. Yeah. If other people want to watch it, then go watch I know a lot of people who go to, like, the league finals to go watch this stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and there's that. This isn't the first time they tried stuff like this. Remember, they tried to. I, I don't know if it still is. But remember, they tried to introduce chess in the Olympics as a as an actual game. Well, where you get medals and stuff. And I remember back in that day, they got a lot of backlash for just that. Even so, heck, if they were willing to not accept chess, people people weren't willing to accept chess. It's like, geez, you know. Mm hmm. So is, is that... yeah, I'm the way done. that I feel on that whole thing is uh, if they're gonna do a 
like calling it a sport, it doesn't make sense to me. And to call it a sport, even you know, even chess, I don't call it a sport. Chess, I call it is a is a very uh, strategic game. It's more of a um, competition. Anything I look at more competitions, um, you can have all different kinds of things. If that's the case, they're going to be like, oh, let's have cosplay as a competition or a, or a, or a sport. And it's like, wait a minute, there, you know, it doesn't. To me, sports are a little more physical. Um, I mean, I would even rather see probably Twister as a as a sport being defined as a sport in that thing because it's more physical. Um, chess to me, I can't go call, call as physical or or um, any button press I can call as physical for something like that. The only thing I could maybe say is, you know, what, what are you going to have like, uh, you know, the world class track meet? You're out, you're running on a power pad. Maybe that would be something. But then <laughs> why do that when you can just have his running? You know, what they have the actual Olympics. Um, doesn't mean I don't consider the games as a any anything that should be taken lightly, but it, it if they want to go and and get the youth, you know, sorry, but you know, I, I, I would I could even I'd rather even see like uh, how many people can collect um, Charizards and Pokemon Go walking around the, you know, <laughs> that would the be arena. A funny thing. Um, you know, it's like, oh, there's a there's a squirtle in the in the sand pit of the of the triple jump. You know, you know, what more can I say? So, but uh, <laughs> I, I I just can't go and see it because of physical games being physical games. Um, the only thing I can even say that would even be kind of close to something like that would be uh, darts, I guess, uh, because darts is like archery where it's accuracy. Yeah, so, um, yeah, because they have they have yeah, cause they have the whole uh, bow thing. So I could see darts one day. I, for all I know, darts could be in there now. And I'm just not aware of it. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, there's all different kinds of like weird sport things. There's, I mean, leagues of dodgeball, leagues of um, everything. It doesn't mean that like I I, I can't co- really call it like e-sports. Like it, even the term just to me is like you know whatever and if anybody yeah unfortunately like, well, you're not you. you're not real <laughs> it's kind of like look you yeah, know i've um, never liked the name I love as well. fighting games yeah i've never liked you know, the it, name. It, 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 yeah i'm not a sports person so esports sort of turns me away but at the same time you know it's like i can see why they would want to use it but Again, no, you know, I know I just said it's not negative, and it's really, it's really not to incorporate more into it. But it, from a, from another standpoint, right, you could look at it as just the Olympics trying to be like, hey, we need to make more money. Oh no, that's you know, clear. That's, yeah, let's be know, honest, because no. they've tried this before. They've yeah. had like the, they collaborate with the World Cyber Games back in like I don't know, bumfuck two thousand two, whatever the fuck it was, mm-hmm. and they had oh, yeah. like those introduction things like they're doing in twenty eighteen, where it's something they hold up. But it's not a part of the game. This is the first time where you can get a. In twenty twenty two is the first time you're going to be get a medal. That's the part I think is very interesting that they're willing to try that. And honestly, like I kind of agree with Mark a little bit. It's not a sport. It isn't. It isn't a sport. And esports is just a title, but it is competitive, and I can see why they want to do it because right now it's very popular and it's only growing the whole scene. And it's, mm-hmm. League of Legends is more popular to watch. The international gets so many views. I can see why they're doing it. The question is, after twenty twenty two, will they stick by their bridges and stick with it? That is the question, and we'll have to find out when that time comes around. Uh, you remember how we I want talking- Nick Arcade? Screw that! Give me Nick Arcade back. <laughs> you know, you throw those little snowballs at the elves, and yeah. they're like, Ooh, when you hit them. Yeah, that was you know? crazy stuff. Why they, you know, why don't they do that? Why don't they do double dare? You know, <laughs> <laughs> give them do a double dare thing. Look at oh, you know, and look at look at the uh, number uh, five of China. He's picking the giant nose. <laughs> and it, it, that would be hilarious. I would love that. It'd be awesome, man. I want them to you know, do it. Be, and I want to win America to win a gold medal in it, and I want to call it a, a, a win for us. That would be great. I, I just well, give it like, like another... the hidden temple uh, run or whatever. Oh yeah, silent curling. That's all we need. Yeah. So, just give it like another but, five uh, years, and then esports will. The name will then finally start to stick because. Like we've done, like we've said in the previous shows, where they go and they switch the words around. Because even though it doesn't mean what we know it means, they'll go and use it. Like when they stop using demos for first impressions, you know. What I mean, just give give it a few years. As long as they keep saying it. Sadly, we live in a world where if you keep saying it, you know, eventually it'll turn out true. You'll get people to believe it. Mhm. Mhm. Absolutely. All right. So moving on to our final well, news item here. Uh, this is 
Bro, uh, this could be a quick one. This could be a short one. Uh, Call of Duty has officially announced that they're going back to World War II, and the next one's going to be called Call of Duty World War II. All right, and that's it. We've, we've come full circle, <laughs> boys. Remember the days when they everyone got sick of World War II? Now we're sick of modern and future, and now we want to go back. It's all come full circle. It's amazing how that works out, isn't it? Oh, my God. And Sledge, so it's, they've, uh, they were trying to keep it under wraps for another for a lot longer, but it, something leaked, so then they officially came out and said, yes, we're doing Call of Duty World War II, and it'll be set in World War II again, and Sledgehammer is the first people doing it. So there we go. I don't really know what to say about this other than I think we all knew this was coming because – what goes around comes around. <laughs> they were started World War II. They went to future. Now they're back to World War II. Just makes sense, you know? I feel like if Battlefield didn't do it first, it would make more of a splash. But Battlefield did it first. So now it just looks like copycat. Can't you be more original? Oh, yeah. The first company to go back to an older yeah. world from future or yeah. for modern. Yeah, because they did do that with the, they tried to do it with Battlefield 1. Yeah, and it was I'm just. I'm surprised Battle- they didn't go do Call of Duty Civil War. Or something. You know what? They have like to. That. They have to cut off somewhere. They they still have to make money. <laughs> I don't think people oh. want to reload muskets or whatever. I I stopped playing. <laughs> like I said, I stopped playing the Call of Duty franchise because it's just, you know, it literally is like the same thing. Like I, I was like, oh, I played this like years ago, and it still is the same thing. I played this years ago. Oh, you can't run and jump pack and run around and nah, I don't care. It's cool. Mm. I oh, want to give it a shot when it comes out because I loved Call of Duty 2 and I'd like to see a return to World War 2 and I want to see what they can do. It is Sledgehammer and I feel like Sledgehammer Maybe. I don't know cuz like obviously Infinity Ward isn't the original Infinity Ward anymore so I don't feel like their games are matter to me anymore. You could debate that <laughs> Sledgehammer is kind of like the new one to me, so I don't know. I'm going to give it a shot. Would this be Call of Duty the next red one? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they'll take away your sprint button. Oh my god! Like, could, we'll make... You know what? That would be very. I want to see what they do. Like, what did they decide to keep? What mechanics are we still going to have? Like, sliding Oops. runs because you could theoretically have that in World War II, but that would seem like a futuristic type thing. You know what yeah. I mean? Because it's definitely going to slow down. We're yeah. not going to be running on walls anymore because they're not going to keep that stuff. Like that would be ridiculous if they kept the want running on wall stuff. So I want to see what they do. I mean, it wouldn't be ridiculous. Every soldier was infused with Spider-Man dreams. <laughs> and then, no, they're and all they're, Captain maybe, America. Maybe they'll put it. Maybe they'll put it into the Olympics, and we'll call it Call of Duty <laughs> Olympic Battle. Uh, there you go. Why not? Let's, we got to get brand synergy going on here. <laughs> I'm just saying, like it totally. Uh. Well, how do you how do you even rest that? It's just like, oh, we're gonna just drop the all these whatever. So like, God. Yeah, that would be funny. Crazy. We're not gonna bring in no more new actors. We're just gonna go back to World War Two. Yep. I don't. I, I don't know. Yeah. You know, I feel like at this point, like, it's not that you ran out of ideas. It's that you're literally just beating a dead horse at this point. <laughs> like, literally, like, the horse is so dead, its skeleton is still popping out shit for you to beat. And then it pooped out a World War Two game. Oh, uh, I feel sorry for that horse. You feel sorry for the horse? I feel sorry for the horse. So let's move on to the gaming spotlight. Oh, oh, oh geez, yeah. They should, they should just have kicks. They should just do carrier pigeon simulator. <laughs> you know, oh, deliver this note. Tie it around the ear. Right around the ear. All right, so yeah, let's. Uh, that's it. We got for news of the week. So we're just gonna go through the gaming spotlight real quick, where we talk about the noted game releases of the week. Oh, it won't be a fast show. We got that whole fucking 10 minute. We got that whole fucking top 10 game thing to do. That takes forever, usually. Alrighty, so we got two noted <laughs> games for this week. And they're ones that are picked out by me, of course. First one we got is Batman, Batman Arkham VR. Uh, what's noted about this is that it originally came on the PlayStation exclusively. And now everyone on the computer VR world can finally experience it. So, mm. enjoy that. Yay. Yay. Uh, the other noted new release of this week is Rick and Morty Virtual Reality. Rickality. That's where you get to mess in around in a world in Rick's garage and play with all his funky gadgets and hear witty dialogue from the creators of the game with a full voice acting and everything like that. So that will be pretty sweet. And then actually I have another one on here that because uh, where I normally get my new game release, they cut off tomorrow. Uh, but actually later on in the week, we're going to be getting Mario Kart 8 Deluxe for the Switch. 
And if you have a Switch, fuck, you better get that because it's going to be like the best Mario Kart game with added tracks. And you get all the DLC and shit. So definitely pick that up if you got a Switch. Or you could be like me and just be like, I don't want no more Mario Kart. Oh, man, you can't bring, get sick of Mario Kart. Bring don't, back my I need don't for speed. That. No, I don't believe that. You, li- you like Mario Kart. Don't is lie. that what we think? I do think that, actually. Uh, the only Mario Kart that I like is the original on Super Nintendo for me. Yeah, my favorite, the it's way like, I rank them. Oh, go on, sorry. I was going to say, it had, like, the best, like, you know, you, um, it, it had the best battle to it. That's just, ah, oh, so, I don't know, it just had such a good feel. And I, and I didn't have to worry about always, like, in races, I didn't have to always worry about the, um, hitting the turns and stuff on any of that. And that's what I really liked about it. The only thing that was a pain in the butt on that is, like, miraculously, your, uh, your behind opponent would always come up right behind you every time you even like shoot a turtle shell behind you or something. So it was whatever. The but, way I rank my Mario Kart know. games is I go, it goes for me. It goes Mario Kart DS is number one. Number two is always the current Mario Kart. Cause it's usually the best objectively. So I would say Mario Kart eight. And then it goes number three is Mario Kart double dash. And then everything else is just below that. <laughs> so those are my top three right there. <laughs> double dash is the shit dog. Fucking 16 player, eight console, two players per TV. Fucking craziness is amazing. They've that's like so crazy that the GameCube did that. I forgot that you could do that. That's right. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing, and oh, I yeah. wish you experience it one more time in my life. There's got to be a convention that will do it. And you know, speaking of I, conventions, I will do that sometime. Sometime <laughs> I will make that happen. Yeah. Speaking of conventions, I'm trying to transition here. <laughs> Segway. Segway. Yeah, Segway. Uh, so Mark, Mark's gonna another reason, one of the reasons Mark came on here. He's actually gonna be running a little convention here in Buffalo, and he's gonna tell us a little bit about it. I am. I am. It's Lil Con, L I L Con, which is over in North Tonawanda, New York, and at, that is on Saturday, May sixth, two thousand seventeen, and that is over at the Socorro Post, over in North Tonawanda, which um. It is 950 Payne Avenue uh, in North Tonawanda. Very easy to get there. It's a giant Legion Hall, basically, and there's four rooms of gaming. There's there's tabletop gaming, video gaming. There's um, uh, a discovery room, we call it. There is also an event room, and we have uh, – we're actually – we also use utilize the outside as well, which we're going to have, like, falconry, so you can have, like, birds on your shoulder, and then they can go and – Swoop down and attack things. I don't know. Ooh, but... <laughs> swoop down. It's actually no, it's pretty know, crazy. Right? Not gonna lie, I think I kind of kind of dig it. I know, right? Bit. If we went, I'm I'm gonna be kind of mad if I don't have no birds swooping down and attacking people. <laughs> yeah, not attacking people. It's just like demonstration. It's like, oh, throw this meat up in the air. <laughs> Grab that. You know, it's pretty crazy. Red-tailed hawks and things. There's all different kinds of falcons and. Or you could call them oh. pigeotos. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> <laughs> Pigeon, use quick attack. <laughs> we um we throw a lot of good tournaments there, especially with video games as well. So since since all you wonderful video game listeners out there, you can partake take in a bunch of stuff. We got a, um a Diddy Kong Racing tournament that we're gonna do. We are going to do a uh, a tournament that is uh, it's called the Ultimate Gaming Championships, and basically it's a uh, it's games that nobody knows what games we're gonna be pulling out, but we pull out of uh four games that. Was an elimination game, you know, there might be a speed run game, a survival style kind of thing, you know, whichever, maybe a fighting game, who knows? And everybody's competing for the glory and it's pretty it's pretty awesome. It's, yeah, it's, those it's events good. that convince always my fave. Yeah. The last one we had uh, James Rolfe, um, angry video game nerd was in it, and so was Natasha Allegri, who is the creator of um or the uh I'm sorry, the storyboardist for uh uh Adventure Time and uh, be, uh creator of being puppy. Yeah. And um, they were both in it, and they had a blast. It was, it was. They had just a lot of fun. It was great. Uh, James James Rolf got to the end, and uh, <laughs> uh, he 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 he, uh, he didn't make it, but he he finished triumphantly at least as a great second place. It was funny. Um, feel a good time, but uh, yeah, it's super good. We have a Smash Bros. tournament. Um, we're gonna be doing uh the Wii one. Because that's got a lot of good characters on it. There's still characters that people wanted to play and things like that. So we're like, okay, we'll do the Wii one. Um, and people just be battling 
like crazy in a, in a tournament like that. So, and you get like prizes and whatever. It's all free to get in and, and, and do for each tournament and have a blast. And um, also what's really cool is we have Buffalo Game Space is going to be there, which um, Buffalo Game Space has, um, it's where uh, a place where you make video games and whatnot. It's like it's a co-op. <clears throat> They're going to be there showing off a bunch of games and, and all that. Plus, uh, Wayne Kubiak is one of our guests. Wayne is the uh, pixel artist of uh, Binding of Isaac, and uh, uh, he did uh, Shuchimi and a bunch of other things, which Shuchimi PewDiePie played, and all these other, you know, other people got really into. So, and that was green lighted up on, um, uh, I think it was Wii U. It was, it was green light on besides steam. Cause I mean, I mean, everything's green light on steam, but um, it definitely got up on consoles as well. So that was really cool. And um, it's, it's just going to be awesome. There's something for everybody. It doesn't matter what you like. It could be tabletop gaming, video gaming. It could be cosplay. It could be just everything. Um, and you know, is, you know, we have a, Oh, we, and, and one of the things that I'm doing uh, especially is you can go and take a peek at some games you met, might not ever really get to play because it's very hard to play them without an emulator. Um, I'm bringing a rare, uh, rare bunch of games in like, say like the misadventures of Tron bond or um, cool stuff. chase the chuck wagon for Atari or um, condor attack for Atari or, you know, just uh, maybe even just like really obscure kind of stuff like um uh, princess tomato in the salad kingdom for nintendo yeah stuff like that cool. so like, i mean get that ability to play the real yeah thing. yeah and, and, that, and that's yeah. what it's all about trying to get people up in there i think i'm going to have some turbo graphics stuff in there um yeah, different um other different things people just like can can uh, explore you know um some sega cd stuff um, probably some Sega Saturn stuff. And I, I, and the thing is too, is I always try and have it where it's all multiplayer games. So like Sega Saturn, I'm going to have stuff like guardian heroes and things like that, which I don't know if anybody's played, but, oh man, it's so, so good as a multiplayer game and it's a lot of fun for everybody. So, you know, um, yeah, it's going to be a fun convention and it's only five bucks. So, you know, you go in there, it's, it starts, um, at noon. You know, noon till about like 11 at night. So you get a very long amount of time to play. You can play some, you know, Dungeons and Dragons for a little while. Then you can go and play some video games. You get, you have a Pokeball hunt. So you run around and you're finding Pokeballs so you can, you know, get prizes and stuff. Um, and that famous we also Pokemon have a really hunt. cool. It, sorry, go ahead. I said that famous Pokeball hunt. I'll tell you, I get a lot of people talk about that one outside of the convention. And I talk to like, yeah, I want to look at the Pokeball. Yeah. Hunt. That seems to be a popular one. Yeah. It's a great. It is great. People do love that. There's um there's also with um we have something that um it is basically it's called Artemis, which is like a bridge of the uh, Starship Enterprise, and that's um one person will be the engine guy, the other guy will be the uh, weapons guy, the other guy will be the captain, and things like that. And it's all you know all different positions, and you will see people um you will see people just going nuts and and uh, playing that too. So that's another interesting electronic um video game styled thing um that's around so you can check that out um and um yeah so it's cool yeah, so, so that's a little con number four guys i remember i actually went to the second one and it was a good it's a good time so I and you can go and check more year. on it on our facebook for it of um if you go to the facebook event or if you go to www dot lilconconvention.com that's l-i-l-c-o-n convention.com yeah we so, dropped the yeah. links in the chat room for anyone watching live so yeah so cool. that's Lilcon, definitely a cool one that definitely likes to get here in the area you know check it out cool stuff indeed but now we're going to hit the main part of our show this week the top 10 guns in video games video transition <laughs> Alrighty, so yes, with the top 10 guns in video games. So Mark will actually be joining us for this. He's going to be giving us his input as well. 
So for people who don't I'm know. I'm super excited right now. <laughs> <laughs> you're like, you're staying up all night. Like, I sat out down and like, I thought of like so many things. I'm like, oh, I'm writing this down. Hey, you, I, you know, it's not, if you want to have an honorable mention list as well, that's completely fine with me, you know. Usually it's hard to fit 10. I do have 10. that too. Yeah, it's hard to fit 10. So the way the way we usually do this, Mark, is I know we kind of went over it a little bit, but we usually go 10, we each say our 10, and then we do each say our 9, and then 8, 7, 6. So it, we go from top to bottom and everything like that. It's kind of weird because I didn't really have any – I didn't know which one was better than the next. So I had just like all of them. I'm like, man, I love all these. I, yeah, love I know, if right? You do it, hey, if you want to say your list is just here are 10 guns I think are good, I don't necessarily – if you want them in a not particular, that's completely fine. Mine will be in an order. If you don't want to, that's fine. Same thing, Artemis. You know, you you know how the sh- shindig works around here. Yeah, it's only my second one. Yeah, and which is first... funny too, because I had an honorable mention with like tons of stuff, and I'm like, oh, oh there's extras here. Oh, great, you know. All right. So, so what we'll do is I'll start it off, then we'll do Mark, and we'll finish up with Artemis here. So I'm gonna just get my honorable mentions out of the way. I've got two. I've got the plasma cutter from Dead Space. Uh, it's literally a gun that shoots plasma to on a, ne- on a molecular level to slice your opponent in half. I had to give that an honorable mention at least, and it's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, my next honorable mention was Bayonetta's guns. Uh, I think they're called Parsley, Sage, Rosemary, and Thyme. Uh, she gets an honorable mention because she has fucking guns on her li- on her feet, <laughs> and she wrecks some oh, shit yeah. with it. So those are my two honorable mentions, and I'll just get straight to my number ten. My number ten is the chainsaw gun from Gears of War series. Uh, the reason this I is actually only- have that in my honorable mention too. Oh, there you go. <laughs> There you go. Uh, so mine's Chainsaw Gun at number 10. The reason it's only at number 10 is because, well, as much as how badass it is, it's still just a chainsaw on a gun. <laughs> but it is cool. Mowing down people, when I first saw that in the first Gears of War trailer and everything, I was like, oh, my God, why has no one done this yet? The idea of mowing down your enemies with a fucking chainsaw on your gun at your convenience is amazing. And then in Gears of War 2, you could chainsaw someone from crotch up, which made it 10 times even better. So, yeah, my number 10 was Chainsaw Gun from the Gears of War series. And go ahead, Mark, with your note. Your, I assume you have honorable mentions, and then your number 10. I had a, I had a couple honorable mentions, which um, I also had the Chainsaw Gun um, from there, which um, uh, it, it's just a very noted good idea. But I think it is the, the bastard grandchild of the Gunblade from Final Fantasy VIII. Um, <laughs> So it's funny that's what I put it as another honorable mention. Yeah, okay, good. Um, we were just saying during the pre-show that, oh, it has to be a gun, so no gun blade. And then we're like, you can put in your honorable mention, yep. so that's funny that you did that. Yeah, there's um, there was like, uh, there's, there's a couple other ones. There's just like uh, two, I should say three. There's um, uh, Metroid in the freeze gun, the freeze ray, because... It was the first time anybody's ever seen like a gun like do something kind of uh, attribute-ish, I guess, um, in a certain way. And um, and then also uh, the uh, BFG. <laughs> so the BFG from uh, it was Doom, right? I think it was. Yeah, Doom. that was Doom. I played that in with a big motherfucking so it gun. Just like destroyed everything. And uh, the only other one I, I had was like Super Scope. Uh, the super for Super Scope Six or any other thing, I I it was it's a physical thing I know. Um, I wanted to try and explain it a better way because you actually do that in Smash Brothers. You can get one and use it, but it's just an interesting concept because there were so many good games of like you know Yoshi's um, what was it uh, Yoshi's Story I think it was or like you know even uh, Blastrix in um, the Super Scope Six's game or or any of those. And I mean, you're shooting a, a bazooka. Who who cannot? <laughs> who can say like, oh, I'm going to have a toy bazooka that does things? It's like ridiculously good. So <laughs> that's my that's my honorable mentions. Like them, I like them. We also need your Word. number ten. Your number ten now. My oh, my number ten. Yeah, now you do your number ten. <laughs> well. If I had to pick, it would probably be the double gun rapid fire from Sunset Riders. Because you just are ripping with two pistols or shotguns ablazing. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's one right there, man. I haven't played, oh, my God. I've never actually was gracefully played that game, but I've actually heard about that game. 
Oh, it's amazing. It's amazing. I hear good stuff from it. All right, Artemis Prime Ooh. with your number 10. Um, actually, I got honorable mentions too. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, um, honorable mentions. Then your number 10. Well, here's the thing, right? So, my list isn't really a top 10, it's just a list of. Yeah, like, it, it, yeah, it just, order, I know, yeah, I know. It's just a list in order of games, that, of guns that I really, 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 really like to use. So, first, let me give a big shout out to every game that allows you to go around and just dual pistol a motherfucker, all right? Oh, okay. Every game that lets you do it. Because you know what? <laughs> Sometimes you just got to walk in guns blazing and just putting them down. Whether you're Dante from Devil May Cry or whether you're playing GTA, you just got to go with the double pistols. I mean, pistols is what you start off with. That's your life. You know, that's what you use. That helps you get through the beginning of the game until you get that AK or that submachine gun or whatever you need. Right? So, big shout out to all my pistols, Mm -hmm. especially my double pistols, yo. I appreciate it. And more (laughs) of a double shout out to... Halo's pistol, because Halo's pistol made you win games in Halo 2, all right? You won games against other people. You killed people because that pistol was just too good. Oh, so I want to get that out the way. Um, also, big shout out to the Torque Bow as well. And the oh, chainsaw shit, the gun. Torque Bow. <laughs> and the Chainsaw Gun from um, Gears of War. Uh, torque Bow. You know, I forgot about the Torque Bow. They, they spoke a lot about the Chainsaw Gun, but... I'm, I'm going to let you know about that torque bow because, man, you could just, that curve, that angle where you just got someone and they exploded into little bite-sized chunks. You know, you were just like, come at me, bro. You mad? I, I feel the sodium in your blood. It's rising. You know, it was just, it was great. And so, and then my also, um, my other one, my other honorable mentions from Call of Duty, it's um, the Vector SMG. Because really, I've only ever used like one SMG in my life, and it's the Vector. All right, there's just, there's just, there's just no other way around it. Sorry, guys. It speaks to you. It speaks to you. It speaks to me. And um, my number 10 actually comes from Resident Evil 4, and it's the Matilda. And I love the Matilda because when you max it out and you got the three shot burst, right? You know how you would play Resident Evil 4, and you'd have all this fucking pistol ammo, and you didn't know what to do with it? Well, the Matilda help you solve that problem, all right? <laughs> because anything that got in the Matilda's way was literally dying. Like, if it was still alive, it was obviously because you were missing all those shots, all right? Like, if you had to reload while fighting someone, you were either fighting a boss or you were missing. And I just, I love the Matilda. Like, even to, even when I started off with, uh, when you beat the game and you start over again and you get to keep some of your guns and stuff, I just, Matilda for life, yo. I didn't care. You know, I was just killing everything. So that's my number 10. Alrighty. My number nine is actually I'm doing my bullshit cheating again. I have a tie for number nine. I have the laptop gun slash foresight sniper from Perfect Dark. Uh, so, hmm. so the foresight sniper was actually on my list of top 10 weapons in gaming. It's the sniper that lets you sit in a corner and you can snipe anywhere from anyone on the map through walls. <laughs> so... I have, like, this semi-rule where, like, I only can have, like, one gun per franchise. That's not actually a hard rule, but I like to impose that on myself. So it was hard between, between, between that between that and the laptop gun. And the laptop gun was a gun that would be in the shape of a laptop. You could use it as, like, a normal assault rifle. Or you could set it up as a turret in, like, a corner or something, and then it would shoot on pe- – you could go fuck off anywhere you want in the map, and it would still get kills for you and stuff. Or if you're really fucking clever like I was, you set up the laptop gun to protect you while you're using the sniper that lets you shoot through walls from anywhere on the map. (laughs) So I would do that so I could then look through my scope constantly and have the laptop gun protect me. So I was one of those assholes. So that's my number nine. It's a tie between those two. (laughs) And go ahead, Mark, with yours. Number next one. My, uh, My number nine is actually the homing ray from uh Raiden 2 the uh the vertical scrolling shooter yes. because that is like you know a laser that is a homing laser that just goes all over the board when you power that thing up it's like it looks like this giant purple snake that is just <laughs> ridiculous and you're like what is going on how are these sprites still able to function without slowdown this is insane and it was like it was just one of the coolest like laser weapons i've ever seen Ever. I know it's got a more of a cannon 
kind of thing, but I guess a cannon's a giant gun, if that makes any sense. So yeah, yeah. Is, is it have a trigger? Does it have, does it have a, a, a shaft? I think that's a gun for me. That's a gun to me. <laughs> I, I think I think if you would go and you you press the little button on the, like a little clicky thing, I think it would. So, <laughs> thematically speaking. <laughs> <laughs> and that's your number nine. Uh, my number nine. I'm gonna I'm gonna continue down with the Resident Evil series. Uh, the Riot Gun. Oh, when, okay. When yeah, I, got I the, know the Riot Gun. Yeah. When I got the Riot Gun in Resident Evil Four, you know, I, if I if I didn't feel fear before, I felt no amounts of fear once I got that bad boy. Oof! I maxed that baby out, and I was just mowing people down with the quickness. I just I just loved the fact that you could just put in six bullets and just. By the time your six bullets was done, you cleared out whatever you was facing. And then you reloaded, and then you went to go and clear out the next room. Like, I love the Riot Gun. It was so much fun. Like, um, the Striker, to me, was okay, but I felt like the Riot Gun was something I really walked around with. And I was just like, I'm going to pump you full of lead. Like, I don't care what you is. I don't care what you possess by. The Holy Spirit, you have to get the Holy Spirit of lead once I get through with your body. It was great. Yeah. It was so much fun. <laughs> um, so that was my number eight. You mean number nine? Number nine. Oh, well. Because my number eight is uh, as a kind of a grouping category thing again. Uh, is any morph array from the Ratchet and Clank series? Now this could mean <laughs> this could be the sheep array. This could be the one where it turns you into ducks. That one. Those the Ratchet and Clank series has so many iconic, unique weapons in it. That I had to pick one. I decided, you know what? What's the one that most people are like, yeah, that's crazy. It would be the Sheep Array from that original commercial. And I think a lot of people would recognize that the most from the Ratchet and Clank series when they think of that. I think, oh, the gun that turned things into sheep or the duck one. or Because down the line, what they did is they kept changing what it turned people into. And it just became the Morph Array. So the Morph Array is my number eight. My number eight, I am going to have to say is... The shotgun from Resident Evil series, um, more or less in the, the older ones, because when I was playing Resident Evil and I got the shotgun and I'm like, oh, no, there's this zombie coming up. And I <clears throat> pulled that trigger when he was close and that head exploded. I I felt like a giddy little schoolgirl. <laughs> That's all I can say. Um, one, when you're far away, stick. you would Boom blast stick. them from afar and it would be like, wow, that's just a bloody mess and pixel blood and polygon blood is still just a beautiful, you know, beautiful array thing. of uh, yeah. crimson. So there you go. Yeah. But I'm, surp- I'm surprised you didn't pick like, like the good old Barry, like, but I, don't worry, Jill, I've got this. <laughs> right. You never well, got you know a chance what? It, it, it's, it's definitely awesome. Um, <laughs> I just, I don't know. I just like the, the look of the shotgun because it's just like when you like hold it, it's like, pow. Just, oh, yeah. No, I get you oh, man. Boom sticks. It's crazy. That's what you got to do. The boom stick. Yeah. yeah. All righty. Your number, your real number eight. Artemis My Star. real number eight. <laughs> um, Speaking of Resident Evil series, uh, this is actually my last one on the Resident Evil series, <laughs> but can we talk for real? About the fucking hand cannon. All right. Like, literally, that piece of magnum that just, mm, just blew you away. It was just like, what? There's still someone here? Oh, it must be his <laughs> ghost because he certainly isn't in front of me. <laughs> the magnum. Like, that hand cannon was so good. And yeah, I get it. It's ridiculous. Like, who uses a gun with a length like that? But it was fucking amazing. All right. It just went. Pow! And you heard it, and you felt it, and you knew you killed something. But if you didn't kill it the first time, the second bullet was definitely going to kill it. Because you were literally pulling it out to fight something you know you wasn't supposed to be fighting. Alright? Like, every time I used the hand cannon, it was because of boss fights. Because I knew that it is hard as fudge to find magnum ammo. And it is hard as fudge to find magnum ammo, (laughs) alright? So, to me, like, the hand cannon... Well, actually, a lot of the Magnus, but the hand cannon is the one that stands out for me. Like, even in Resident Evil 5, when I was using that bad boy, I was just like, come on, Wesker, come get some. Let's dance in this lava, yo. I got hand cannon ammo. Three <laughs> bullets left. Fudge. I guess I'm going to have to play this really, really hard. <laughs> so, you know, the hand cannon was just, that was, 
Mm, beautiful gun. Even the mercenary is like when you can when you can use it in the mercenaries when you played as Alvarez himself, and then he was and you were using it as him. It just gave you like that extra gratified feeling. Like I know I just knocked your ass into some lava, but I mean, come on, man. Let's go kill some zombies let's together. Let's go kill some zombies. Let's go together. kill some zombies together. Or let's fly this. Whatever you want to call them. All right, but let's go kill them, mofo's. Let's go kill them and annihilate them. Yeah. So at, at the end of my uh, Resident Evil series, the hand cannon would be my number eight. Good stuff. Now I know Mark, you're on a little bit of a time restraint. It is eight o'clock. I don't know if you need to go. If you just want to just, just fill out your. Oh, uh, I can. We can. We can keep going. Can I keep say going? I'll just fire them off a little more. Not, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> all right, then. Then my number seven. Uh, all right. My number seven is Mr. Toots from Red Faction Armageddon. Do you guys know what Mr. Toots is? Nope. No. Nope. Yeah, I don't know. I never played that one. Mr. Toots is a unicorn that you carry around that if you wish he, he can use as a oh, gun. Oh, yeah. You shoot rainbow lasers from his butthole, and when you begin to shoot with him, he makes a cringy face like, ah! Like he's pooping out a giant rainbow, and it's a rainbow laser that destroys fucking everything. Thank you, Red Faction series. You gave me fucking Mr. Toots, a unicorn that shoots out fucking rainbow lasers to destroy my enemy. Yep, you carry him just like a gun. <laughs> it counts. I call it. It counts. And that's my number seven. <laughs> that's that's fantastic. <laughs> Good luck, beat topping that oh, one, Mark. <laughs> uh, I well, I I might I might be able to here. I might be able to. The, uh, the, the next one, well, if, if not that, uh, one of the ones that will be a little later, you will yeah. laugh very hard at. Um, the, the next one is from a game that is very, very, very new that is called Shotgun Farmers. And the, the, the gun that you will fire is called the Pistol, which um, in Shotgun Farmers, you shoot, um, you shoot uh, vegetables at uh, your, your uh, opponents. And the Pistol you shoot um, peas from the, the, the pistol. And um, <laughs> all, these, all these, yeah, <laughs> it's funny because I, I called it the pea shooter when I saw it. And I'm like, that's hilarious. It literally there's, all, there's all different kinds of game, like uh, different um, weapons you have in that game too, where it's like a watermelon cannon and, a, and a, 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 uh, there's like a sniper rifle that's like an ear of corn or something like that. It's just, it's crazy. So... Um, and that's that, that's a little shout out to my buddy Quasi who made that game, uh, Shotgun Farmers. Go check it out. It's pretty pretty ridiculous and crazy. That's yeah, hilarious. Those guns. Mm -hmm. Your number seven, Artemis. All right. So now we're coming into the Call of Duty Modern Warfare Two series. Oh, geez. A game which I played the shit out of. All right. That was literally like one of the only Call of Duty games I ever prestiged in. But um, I'm actually I'm actually gonna pull off a Matt Cam move and do a tie <laughs> because it, it it's shotguns. But there's two shotguns I really want to mention. One is the Model 1887 before it got nerfed like a motherfucker. All right, I mean like it was still fun to double Kimbo them things and just walk around and just make people fly away. Like I, my brother was a bigger Call of Duty fan than me, right? So what happened was I, I was watching him play. And he was using the miles. I was like, this is amazing. What level do I got to be at? He was like, oh, you got to be at such a level. I was like, oh, 67? I played that. I went two, I think I'm going to take it like two or three days because I just played the fudge out of it. Back when, you know, I was younger, obviously. But, you know, I played it and I played it and then I finally got it. And I was like, man, this gun is amazing. I can see why people do this. And then like literally like two days later, they nerfed it. So I really couldn't enjoy it as much as I wanted to. But it was still... Even after they nerfed it, I still had my phone with it, you know, because there were just a lot of ga guns in Call of Duty that I really enjoyed for the first time. Because, like, don't get me wrong, there was Modern Warfare, but I didn't really get into it like that. Like, I didn't start jumping into the Call of Duty series until Modern Warfare 2. And then that's the game where I was just like, this is fun as all fuck. Like, I see why people want to play this game all the time. To make it feel even worse, I got to play up those Kimbo Slices as long as you possibly could before they nerfed it. And it was uh, so nice. They were. The they Kimbo were, Slices all day, baby. They were so lovely. And, um, <laughs> and so on the other side of that, the other tie I wanted to say was the shot off shotguns that you used in Time Splitters. 
now. Oh, time, time splitters. Later, yeah, time splitters. Fuck, Super I can't believe I forgot about time splitters. Now I regret. <clears throat> I regret it, my list completely. It, it, and, you know, I was thinking about it. I was like, I don't remember a lot of the guns, but I totally remembered a lot of shotguns because what happened was we would play a lot of the zombie matches and stuff. So it would be me and my friends, and we'd just be trying to, bat, you know, survive against, like, all these people who were, um, th obviously, the CPUs, of course. But we were just trying to survive against them, and it was just so much fun because we all went out with our... Pow! 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 Up in the air! Pow! Wow. Up to the side! Pow! Wow. That's all we did. And it was just... I had so much fun using dual-wielded shotguns, like... Mm. So I, the reason I tied them up was because it was it was just so much fun. Like literally just laying waste to someone and then watching them fly away from you and then they don't get back up. It's just great. It's a great feeling, especially when you try to win a game yeah, or you try to survive. Shotguns always have a great feeling in uh, games, let me tell you. It's just amazing. Yeah. Speaking of guns that make you have a good feeling in me, uh, so my number six is I got to give it up. You know, I do have some OG things on here, Mark. I, I, I figured your list would be full of a lot of them, but I got one. I got the one that matters, in my opinion. For number six, it was really hard to put this at six, too, but I had to do it. I have the spread gun from Contra. That's the spread gun. I man. got that on mine, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it is lower on my list, but this is a list that reflects my gaming, so the spread gun is, is, is okay at number six for me. And what can I say about the spread gun? Fucking once you got that, if you were wrecking shit later in the game series, you could get a double spread gun and literally shoot from both sides and do a jumping spread gun shooting attack and destroy everything on screen. So, yeah, spread gun from Contra. It's a good goodie. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that was definitely on my list, too. Um, I uh, I think that's later on, though. The, the next one that I was going to say for me, number six, it's kind of a double thing, kind of like what you had for a double before, but um, the, the only reason is because of how you acquire it would be the golden gun from Sly Spy or the heavy barrel gun from Heavy Barrel because you uh, collect all these pieces and you get this giant gun. And um, with uh, in Sly Spy, I just remember playing that in the, arca uh, in the arcade and it's like golden gun. And you're like, yeah, everything's dead. And so it's like you just go through just blazing through everything. But that was uh, probably more or less the, the golden gun from Sly Spy. Yeah, I never, unfortunately, I never got to play that. But when I think of Golden Guns, I think, you know, GoldenEye 64. <laughs> well, I, I think that's where they got the idea from, actually. It's probably, it probably is completely, because I'm pretty sure that GoldenEye came out later than that. Oh, mm -hmm. way later. Yeah. All righty, Adam's Prime, your number six. My number six is get on the Scar. Oh, from Modern Warfare 2. Yeah. Oh, my a, God. The Scar. The Scar. Oh, I legitly used the Scar for so long. I Exactly. The Scar was just one of those guns. I legitly used that. Like, you li would literally, like, by the time I prestige, I unlocked everything for the Scar. Because the Scar was literally the only gun I used for forever. And when I got the, the next one, uh, I'm just going to combine them. Because they're, they're pretty much the same type of, of gun. It's just that the ACR was the next one that I used because once I once I maxed out the R, I was like, man, I need a new gun to max out so I can level up faster. And the ACR just happened to be the next best thing since Hot Potatoes. And I was like, well, fuck this. I'm going to use the ACR too. So I ended up, um, so I ended up putting them both on the list, both on the list. And the reason I said both of them was because they're, truthfully, they are the exact type of gun. You know, they both streamline, they both hold. But, I just had to give them the recognition they deserve because I went through so many matches with them. And I was just like, if I prestige, I kept one of those two guns. Exactly. It was just, it was a they, great they, kill. Yeah, it was legitimately good guns. Yeah. Uh, continuing the trend with the, I actually do have one Call of Duty gun on here, and it's one that you mentioned earlier. I have the Winchester Model 1887 from Modern <laughs> Warfare 2. Man, when you got uh, unlocked the double version of them, a Kimball slicing people, it so was OP, man. Like, it, the range was literally like of an assault rifle and mm -hmm. the power of a shotgun, and you just go shoot one, sh then you shoot two, and then you, while the other one was reloading, you shoot again, and then you're there down. It was so OP. It was great. Such great times. It, it, people called them the Akimbo Slice because at the time that UFC was so – for MMA, I don't know which one he was in. That's how – it was so wrecking force powerful. They named it after a fucking fighter. That's how great it was. So that – and it was hard because, you know, there's other guns <laughs> I like in that series, but it was just – that's the one I had to pick, 1887. from. Wreck your face. Wreck your shit. 
And that was my number five. My number five is the lightning gun from Buck Bumble, the N64 oh game. When you're a... Oh, my Ooh. God. Yeah. I legitly yeah, used that, playing... too. Oh, yeah. Going going back to playing as a, a cybernetic bumblebee. Oh, my God. <laughs> So I remember that. shooting that giant uh, lightning gun was probably one of the coolest things where Holy you just shit. Um, shoot it through and, and it just destroys everything. Every little hornet that comes to your way, you're done. Forget about it. And that's yeah. my number five. That's your number five. That's a good one. All right. Um, my number five is the M16. And you know, that was the one I was going back and forth between because the M16 is just iconic in terms of, like, that's the go-to weapon. For yeah, that's, that's, like, that's, like, my next go-to weapon. And um, I literally just, I love that three-round burst. You know what I mean? Like, a three-round burst just that made made power. the gun just more steady for me. You know what I mean? Where yeah. I knew that if I didn't get you in that first three rounds, I aim a little lower and let it go up, and it finishes you off for me, and I'm not worried about nothing. You have to get that stopping power, too, and you're just, you're, they're done. Yeah, you know, you're just, like, wrecking their face at that point, and I just... Like, a lot, I use uh, the assault rifles a lot. Like, don't get me wrong. Like, I like certain shotguns, like the AA-12 and stuff. But, like, the assault rifles was my baby. All right? That was when I went around my with. Baby. You know what I mean? Like, whenever I played games that were like, oh, you know, you got your, like, uh, Republic Commando, for example. I was always assault. You know, when I played Star Wars Battlefront, I was always that guy who had the assault rifle and was just like, we going hard, all right? That's it. I'm on the front lines. I ain't sniping you. I'm not yeah. about that life. And, um... I'm not sniping you. I still ain't about that life. <laughs> but I will totally assault rifle your life to death. Or whatever their version of it was back in the day. Yeah, exactly, exactly. That was my number five. Uh, my number four is a classic. And it's, you know, we got this trend of World War II games. Is the M1, N1, I never say, I always call it the M1 Grand. That's not how you actually pronounce it, but I'm going to call it that. That's the way I call it. Is the M1 Grand from any World War II game. You know, if you want that classic single action bullet rifle that's the one you go with and that's the classic one for me when it came to world war ii games so i play medal of honor if i was playing call of duty 2 just get that m1 grand and just wreck people's shit get them down once you boom reload boom get them down classic and that's my number four nice my uh my number four is actually the spread shot from contra oh, there you and go. super contra and you know all those good, all those good contras that they had. The spread shot, as we noted, was one of the most greatest weapons to all, all gaming. Because nobody wanted the laser gun; they all just wanted to, the spread. Yeah. It was a machine gun. Everybody just wanted the spread. So there you go. I remember when you team up spread. with someone, you fight over for it. Fight over. No, let me get it. No, I get it. <laughs> I get the spread. Yep, gun. yep. That's pretty much it. Yeah. I remember trying to like jump in and, and I would die, like run into bullets because I'm trying to just get the spread. <laughs> so I'm a, I was a terrible gamer that way. And, and, and even if you're like trying to press the button, like super fast, you're like, Oh, I'm going to get all the spread. It's like, then the spread will only shoot like maybe two spread bullets instead of five. Yeah. <laughs> Cause you're pressing so fast. Yeah. So crazy stuff. Yeah. Um, number four. Now we're in my favorite series, the Halo series. There you go. And um, let's talk about that battle rifle. <laughs> the BR, baby. Oh, man. <laughs> that was nice. just the gun to use. You knew if you didn't have that gun in Halo that you were just not going to win. Assault rifle's nice, but the battle rifle just puts you down. All right? And there's, just, there's nothing you could say against that unless you're using, like, the pistol. But the battle rifle literally just made you go, oh, you're, you're going to fight me? No, you're not. No, you're not. You're not going to fight me. You're just going to die. Yep. And they had it, a whole mode for it for a reason. The MLG made it a yeah. standard weapon for a reason. It was just, it was so good. Like, you knew that if you got the battle rifle first, you had control of that match. No matter what you were playing in, you know, and don't get me wrong, there were some boards that would make you think twice. But you knew in the long run that if you had the battle rifle, you were good. You were golden. You were going to mess someone's life up. You were at least going to get two to three kills and make people not appreciate you. <laughs> Be like, this motherfucker over here, come see me without the battle rifle, yo. Come talk to my energy sword. And blah, 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 blah. But, you know, that's a story for another time. But um, 
Battle Rifle is my number four. Uh, you're righty. Uh, my number three is where we're getting to the ones that I really feel deserve to be high up on the list. My number three is the Gravity Gun from Half-Life 2. What was mm-hmm. what was amazing about this is because one, it was a gun that requires you to have no ammo. You just pick up an object, throw it at an, an enemy, and they get sliced up if it was a buzzsaw. They get destroyed if it was a crate. It was a gun that needed no ammo because the world was your ammo. Not only that, but it was an iconic type of gun because at the time it was showing off the tech of like future game engines, look at the things that they could do and how introduce you can introduce new environmental puzzle solving with these type of gun mechanics and it was all yeah it was all wrapped up in a first person shooter and and it was in a gun and you did some interesting things you could do with moving the environment around using anything as your your ammunition (sighs) repicking up the same buzzsaw five times and carrying through the whole level and saying i'm gonna kill all my enemies with just the buzzsaw with the gravity gun like that's a unique thing you can do in that game so i have to give props to the gravity gun from the half-life 2 series and that is my number three my number three is it is a physical gun it is the gun ton uh that namco made and the reason i'm picking that is because especially for the game point blank a shooting gallery game or you know you could even let's say that there's other ones with it but the gun ton was a fantastic gun um that used for many 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 of, the, of different series it could be vampire night it could be um time crisis and whatnot and um Basically, with the gun time, especially in Point Blank, it was just really cool because, like, you could uh, – just a smooth firing of how it feels. And especially when you uh, – when the trigger pulled with the little uh, the little um, recoil that would have in the arcade guns and things like that, it was just awesome. It was awesome. It, it felt not cheap. It felt great. And um, even though it was more of a physical thing, in the games that it, that it had – it felt good too. Even in, you could even say like uh, in NES that the zapper had good little uh, recoil shocks for like when you press that trigger, you, you felt that spring, and that's it's kind of like why. But it felt good with the. Um, it just even felt a little better with the with the gun cons for me. But that's uh, that's my top. Uh, that's my number three on that one, um, especially in the game Point Blank. Yeah, because that the, the idea of the physical guns, I, I like that you considered those. Uh, because I wouldn't, ah, you know, maybe the Zapper. But for me, I've never had such great experiences with them. But there are some really cool gun games out there. Like, like the one you mentioned with the recoil action and everything. Like, I totally, I knew about that one. I never played it. But I totally glossed over that because it's something I never actually got to play. But it is something that needs to be recognized. It's pretty cool, some of those gun, like, those arcade-style gun games. Or even, like, ones that you could do from home. In fact, there was a fucking console that literally gave you a fucking gun attached to it from a classic console back in the day. So... <laughs> I have, uh, I think it was the Telestar, uh, Telestar gun. I don't remember. Yeah, that's it looks the one like that's it, like the console literally a Star Wars triangle, right? Console or? So, I don't remember. Yeah. But it was wow. Yeah. I mean, even in the arcades, they had the clay pigeon ones with the with the. Uh, they were actually looking like rifles, and you shot the uh, the hologram looking uh, light things. I remember actually. I'm 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 sorry. I'm probably talking too much on this, but. Well, oh, if I can give one more honorable mention, there would be a game called Ninja Gun, which Ninja Gun had a, uh, it, it was like little cardboard cutout things, like how it was. And I remember playing that at Showbiz back in the day, if anybody remembers that. Um, it was even before Major Magics. And um, they had the, um, they had Ninja Gun there, and it, and it would shoot light out of it. And you would shoot these ninjas that would go across and stuff like that. But anyway... That's a, it's just That's an extra cool little right little uh, tidbit because that was like a physical kind of weird things they had in the arcades. It was cool. So anyway, new honorable mention for me: the gun from the Terminator pinball game. Go! <laughs> That's my honorable new honorable mention. <laughs> <bench for me. laughs> oh yeah! Because <laughs> the fucking shooter for the ball was a fucking gun. It was the fucking shotgun he had. So. Yeah, so that's new honorable mention for me. Go ahead, Artemis Prime, if you're number three. <laughs> All right, my number three are is literally is more of like a a, a mix and mash from um, Halo Two, because in Halo Two, you had the ability to dual wield. So you know you had your um was it Halo Two or no? It was Halo Two. It was Halo Two because you had your dual needlers, which was beautiful, and then you had your plasma pistol and your pistol. So when you charged it up. You got rid of their shield. All it took was one shot to the head, and they were down. So, a lot of the dual, I could, I consider the dual wielding like a whole category. I mean, like the dual SMGs were my favorite because I was one of those people who, again, 
I'd run up to you and we're just like, we going down, yo. <laughs> Either you gonna die first or I'm gonna die first. Yep, and if I jump that works. <laughs> and if I jump up, you just missed your shot, I'm killing you first. So the dual SMGs were are literally like my favorite, but I, I feel like the whole the whole dual wielding in general just needs to be given props because there was just so much you can do do with it, whether it was the dual kneelers. I didn't even start on dual kneelers. Like if you hit someone with all those kneelers, they were dead. All right, like they were still exploding after they were dead, so it was just, it was great, so much fun. Good times all around. Uh, my number two is kind of following up the same vein as the gravity gun. We have the portal gun from Portal One and Two. Uh, it pretty much all the same reasons for the gravity gun, except this is fucking portals. <laughs> you can fucking literally put a <laughs> portal any way you want to, to fucking get anywhere you need to get, dog. That's fucking amazing. If you what gun? It came down to. If I really wanted, which gun would I want in real life? And I came down to be like, yeah, portal gun. So I had to be number two because of that. It's a gun I would actually want in fucking real life. Like, as much as I love the gravity gun, the N1 Grand, like, actually, you could even get a real N1 Grand in real life. I would, if you gave me a portal gun, be like, yeah, I can dig this. And it would be amazing. So that's my number two portal gun. <laughs> My number two is, uh, you know how you, you were talking about the unicorn, huh? Yeah, Mr. Well, Toots. Here's my, uh, here's, here's the one that I said might be the, mo the more possible ridiculous option is the, uh, the gun that's the pheromone gun from Galgun. Um, if anybody has ever heard or played Galgun, Galgun is a game that is a rail shooting game where basically uh, you were shot with Cupid's arrow and every girl wants you very badly. And the only way to defend yourself is Cupid gives you a pheromone gun that where you shoot women with this gun that are trying to basically jump your bones and, you know, best classic game of death. 2017. I'm calling it now. That's my, that's going to be on my list yeah. for the awards at the end of the year. That's going to be my best classic game of, of 2017. There you go. I'm calling it. That's a game. game sounds amazing. <laughs> I'm downloading that immediately you, uh... after the show. And we're going to give it a shot Thursday. Yeah, you de it's definitely a, uh, a PS3 game. Um, uh, there were oh my God, not wait, a this ton is a of them made. recent game, too? I'm thinking yeah, that's like a, yeah, PS1, a PS1, PS2 something, or just like an older game. That's like PS3? Oh, my God. Yeah, P PS3. It was a more in the uh, the earlier uh, of it, and I think it's Japanese, I think. Of, yeah, it's got to be a Japanese I think it would be game, more dog. Like... There's no way it isn't. <laughs> but, I I think it did have um, some English option to it though I don't remember but basically you you basically um, there's a, and there's a little bit of a dating sim in there I guess too or something but anyway you um but you shoot girls in the boobs you shoot them in the mouth you shoot them in the vag you shoot them all wherever and they just they basically orgasm on, into unconsciousness so that's how that gun goes Yep that sounds like a Japanese and, game to me <laughs> Yep. <laughs> What's this game called? That's, Are you sure this game isn't on the two. PS Vita? Are you sure it isn't on the Vita? <laughs> that's our that's our joke of the show. We make fun of the Vita a lot. What's this game called again? <laughs> Galgun. G A L U N. Yep, we have a new game. Yeah. Check out on the website now. We will definitely be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so yeah, glad I think I that's a little better than Mr. Like Toots. <laughs> I think that's a little better than Mr. Toots because how that's a little bit more ridiculous. At least you could grasp the concept of a unicorn shooting rainbow lasers out of his butt. <laughs> oh, whoa. That make whoa, women orgasm. I apologize for everyone who's anyone. I had to put a he headphones warning now. <laughs> that was loud. Uh, it's okay. We don't have <laughs> we don't have fancy cough buttons. All right, but that's a cool number. That's a cool number two, man. I agree. All right, our, Thank our you guys. Prime. I don't know how we continue now because that's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, <laughs> I can't I know. go back to my serious guns now. Yeah, my, well, my my only <laughs> next serious gun is really um the sniper rifle from Halo, from Halo Four. Let me be specific, from Halo Four, because I said right, I, I said before, I never, I didn't snipe in Call of Duty. You know, maybe like once or twice to pass the time, but I never really sniped like that. But in Halo Four, I sniped like nobody's business. Because to me, the sniping in that game was just so good. Like, I could do it. I could get two people in a row. And I couldn't really, like, I didn't really have the mechanics down to get that in, like, Call of Duty or to get that in, free, uh, in Halo 3. But, like, in Halo 4, I was picking them off, like, that, that, that. And when I did it, I didn't realize it, but it was just so much fun. It was just, like, OMG, 
what the, what the heck are we doing with this? Like, I've never sniped before. Why not? <laughs> and then I went to Call of Duty and I tried sniping and I realized I just suck at sniping in Call of Duty. But I could do it in Halo. So I was like, well, I guess I'm sticking to Halo. Halo all day, baby. Halo all day. Halo all day. Alrighty, so let's get into our our, our number ones. All right. Uh, I kind dun, of, dun, dun. yeah, so I might, people might say I, uh, you know, copped out on my number one, but I still believe it's number one. As much as like the portal gun is a gun that I want in real life. If you came up to me or maybe any general gamer for a while, when you ask them, what is like an iconic gun? They might definitely say the spread gun. They definitely might say the pistol in Halo 2. They might even say some things from like, you know, Quake and things like from tribes or maybe even unreal tournament but the one thing that you always think is iconic from 90s gaming is like the classic rocket jump right well for me my number one is the rocket launcher from quake <laughs> yeah it's uh it, there's a reason there's a whole production company that bases themselves off of that logo <laughs> and idea of rocket jump of jumping uh the rocket launcher from quake is one of the first ideas of, of a competitive shooter using the physics of the game to get a competitive advantage over things the idea of if i shoot this rocket i take a little health loss but i jump higher and move faster my momentum becomes better and i can use it to bounce off walls and get that edge on my opponent or get to areas more efficiently than any other person could like that was so cool in the 90s and early in 2000s when i used to watch quake tournaments and stuff and it's like seeing players do some amazing things with the idea of just using the physics of a game to accelerate yourself the weapon not only destroys your enemies but actually is a tool for your navigation and everything like that and you know most people i would debate if you say what's a famous icon what they go like spread gun rocket launcher from quake heck even maybe you know things like that so that's what i think comes up and most people think of that and that's my number one a rocket launcher from quake my number one is the ultimate gun beyond all guns and that is Mega Man's arm cannon. Ah, you um, know, the there, arm cannon. Mm -hmm. There is no gun that can go and do what that thing can. It can shoot magnet missiles. It can shoot uh, snakes out of it. It can shoot uh, uh, ice icicles. It can shoot bombs. It can shoot, uh, you know, missiles of all different kinds, a mega blaster, uh, and I mean, it's every kind of gun firing, it shoots it. It doesn't matter what it is. It shoots it. So Mega Man's arm cannon is have to be the ultimate gun for all purposes. It's like, it's kind of like a multi-tool for, uh, you know, it's like, oh, here, get me, get here. I need a screwdriver. And it's like, okay, I need my can opener. It's like the Swiss Army knife of all guns. Very versatile indeed. And to quote Eagle Raptor, it shoots lemons. <laughs> <laughs> it shoots lemons. That is definitely a good pick for its versatility. That is my number one. All right, Iris Prime, what is your number? I feel bad we made you last now. <laughs> no, don't be, because I feel I'm actually really happy I went number one because uh last because my gun is actually not a Halo serious gun. I would actually say it's a really really iconic gun because right. don't no one has never heard of the golden gun from oh. golden eye oh my god you did no. the golden gun is number one <laughs> no one has ever heard of that like everyone's heard of the golden gun and i was just like i used to play the golden eye like a lot and everyone has like their little bragging right but no matter how much you brag no matter how much crap you talk about 007 everyone used the golden gun Everyone used the golden gun. Like, everyone used the golden gun. Like, who didn't use it? And who was just like, everyone was like, oh, when I get the golden gun, I'd mess your life up. Like, that's cool. When I get it first, I'd mess your life up too. So, I am using the golden gun as my number one because it just. It just well, it, it just, is a gun, and if you get hit with it, you die instantly. So, yeah, you know, you have, it a, just, you have a point there. We've got, so we've got. Oh, so our, I like all of our number ones. We've got one for versatility because it's Mega Buster is clearly versatile. We've got it's one to... that clearly just does what it's supposed to do. It's a gun. You shoot. If you get hit, you're done. That's what the golden gun is. And then we've got the one that you can use it. You can use it in an unconventional way to get, achieve your goals. So I like I like all of our number ones, and that's our top ten 
I do too. Gaming. I really do too. Because Yay! I'm glad no one stole the golden gun. Thank you all for not stealing the golden gun. I agree. You know, I was gonna put my honorable mentions, but I was like, nah. You know what? I don't want to do the golden gun. No, I got to no. do ones that I want. Funny your I your portal gun what... was also an um, uh, honorable mention that I was thinking of for uh, at my list too. Yeah, because I didn't want to. I was like, you know, what? I didn't really use the golden gun. <laughs> Hate to say it, I never used the golden gun, so I don't I... have a I don't have a fondness for it personally. So. When I, when I look back on my list, I pro I feel like my pistol shout out should have probably been number one. Like don't get me wrong, I like the golden gun, but it's just like it's just like you know every day every game you play you start off with that pistol. You start off with that one pistol that's there to help your life. Even when you play Call of Duty, you know your secondary gun is a pistol. Like your pistol is just your best friend. Mm -hmm. Don't get me wrong, golden gun is still great at what it does. That's why it's my number one. But I feel like pistols in general just like clear up everything. I mean, like plus like when you do wield them, I mean shit, yeah. you just get stuff done. Get stuff done. Whether you're Bayonetta or Dante, you just make people deader. Exactly, deader the better. <laughs> Alrighty, well that was our list, and I think it was quite a good one. Definitely different versatile in terms of things we pick between everybody. I like that. That's what I like about it when we all have different picks. Mm -hmm. Not much overlap. Maybe in the honorable mentions, you know, well the spread gun came up twice, but that's about it. Oh, and the Winchester, I guess, but whatever. But that will be our show. Can't, oh. can't beat the classics and the goodies. Yeah, you got a, you had a lot of the good classics there. So that will be our show. I want to thank Mr. Mark Miller for coming on here. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you guys again for letting me uh, spiel off about uh, guns that are uh, <laughs> in, in gaming. And, and thanks again for letting me uh, uh, talk about my convention, which everybody, once again, come on out. It is on Saturday, May 6th uh, at uh, the Socorro Post in North Tonawanda, 950 Payne Avenue, North Tonawanda. Uh, noon is uh, when uh, doors are open, so you just come on in. It's five bucks, all ages, tons of gaming, tons of video gaming, cosplay, cosplay contests, lots of rare games, things you might not see, falconry, guests like Wayne Cooper, Biak, who uh, did um, Binding of Isaac, and um, lots and lots of other things. Buffalo Game Space. Check out all the indie developed games that are developed right here in Buffalo, New York. And um, also, um, you can uh, you can shake hands with me because I'm, <laughs> I'm a sweet guy. Yeah, there you go. You know, He's and, a sweet guy. You can talk yeah, about the top ten so, gaming stuff he talked about here. You know. Yeah, and so uh, you can you can tell me how how much. Uh, uh, how much you you want to slap me across the face for dissing the Nintendo Classic? So there you go. And uh, <laughs> yeah, um, but that, uh, yeah, once again, Lilcon, uh, L I L C O N Convention dot com. That's L I L con, uh, C O N Convention dot com. Check it out. And uh, yeah, so thank you guys, and uh, I really appreciate it. It was good, good, uh, good talking, and good to hang out with you guys. Indeed, we appreciate it too. Indeed. And thanks to Artemis Prime for hosting, as always. Ho one of the hosts with the most. One of them, of course. We've got multiple. Mike with the check, with the yeah. with the file. Yeah. And, you know, and we're going to make a, a man out of you. Oh, yeah. He's learning the lyrics, finally. Dun. Yeah. <laughs> so make sure you guys check out MakeUpScorcher.com for all the VODs, all the other shows and whatnot. Follow us on Twitter at, at RFPTV. And like us on Facebook. Search Remove from Play under Shows. Add us to your circles on Google+. Plus. Remove from Play when you search under there. Join the forums to continue the conversation beyond the show. MakeUpScorcher.ProBoards.com. So we can, uh, if you didn't like what we said, if you think you have a better list, why don't you go on our forums, make up an account, and start you know, showing us your sweet gaming knowledge of your what you think is the better get, top 10 get guns and gaming and whatnot this has been episode number 181 of removed from play tuesday april 25th 2017 and we'll catch you all uh, we'll catch you all next week bitches peace out bye bye, -bye.